This is my mower. It's been giving me grief for the past few seasons. I'm just like, let's put in a new engine. I couldn't find any videos on YouTube on how to do this. So I figured I'd share this with you so you knew how to do it. Or maybe what not to do. So first step, you gotta take off this housing that protect, it's the heat shield for the engine so you don't burn yourself, just four bolts. Then I'm removing the gas lines. There's a return line and then the inline. This is the fuel filter, which was disgusting and could have been probably part of the problem. I put my sunglasses down so I didn't splash gas in my face and maybe put down some paper towels so you don't splash everywhere. This is the throttle cable. Uh, the previous mechanic put that in the wrong hole, so that also could have been a problem for a long time. And I don't know if that did any damage. That's what I'm checking here. I just wanted to see what it would look like if it was installed correctly. Unplug all the electric cables. There's a ground wire there that's uh, bolted to the engine block. And then the power line goes into the starter. You gotta be careful with these plastic clips. Those can snap and then when you put it back together, those just dangle everywhere. They're, they're there for a reason. Then I'm just under here checking out what's going on and this is YouTube appreciation time. So this would be a great time to subscribe to the channel. Click that subscribe button, click that notification button and please comment. It takes a lot of effort to make these. And I do it because I love you. <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of space, so I propped the lawnmower up on those blocks. This was all in vain. I'm using a an impact wrench, an electric impact wrench. And all I did was just have dust fall on the camera. Carl, I don't know what this tool is called, but it goes like this. <laughs> I just ended up having to muscle it. And it took me a while to figure out which direction I was supposed to be tightening, loosening, whatever. So once I got that figured out, I ended up loosening the nut and not tightening it. That really helps. I use this impact wrench to just get the big bolt out faster so I didn't have to keep spinning it by hand. This pulley is mounted to the clutch and then everything just kind of falls down so you kind of got to hold it after you release this uh, bracket that is right here. This actually fell off last season and my kids noticed sparks flying out of the back because the clutch was spinning and the cables tore and there were sparks flying out of the back of the lawnmower. So that got put on with lock nuts, but then this part I just put out of the way because you see that black cable going up that plugs into all the electrical. That key is welded in there. Oh, I did something nice. So all these tensioners and the whole goal is to get the four bolts that hold the engine down loose. This tensioner ended up being in the way. That was really frustrating. So this is under tension, so that was not fun, but then it just has this hook that mounts into the chassis. After some finagling that comes out. And then there's four bolts. Those just come out pretty easy. Engine gets removed. We grab that nut that Jonathan accidentally dropped off when he was undoing the ground cable and then the motor just goes in. This part was a little frustrating because I'm getting the bolts lined up and after calling the dealer, uh, it turns out that the four bolts, I'm not sure what I think of this because I didn't necessarily notice somebody said there's a little notch on there that they're self tapping. So I ended up using these uh, lock nuts and washers to make that happen. But I guess I could have tapped that because the new holes were smooth bore. And I guess they're 
you you just tap them in there. You live, you learn, I'm an idiot. That pulley I think I also put on upside down initially because it wasn't the whole the whole assembly wasn't sliding back on smooth. So once I got that figured out, I was really appreciative that that keyway was welded on there because if that was loose, that would have been a nightmare trying to handle all that. That you gotta finagle on a little bit. And then just remember how your brackets came off. It's just reverse assembly, reverse disassembly. And that bracket is what holds that clutch still. Otherwise, again, it, it just freely spins. I put that lock nut on it so that it doesn't come off because it was just a regular nut before and just the vibrations from the engine made that come off and made my weekend really bad a year ago. Uh, I used the impact to get the bolt on there, but then I did tighten it down by hand. This I put on at the in the appropriate hole the dealer and the service manager pointed out hey make sure it's in the bottom hole i went to go check the throttle and it wasn't moving and that little piece of metal holds it still for shipping so that gets moved reconnect all the electrical attach the positive to the starter This next part was frustrating. This was a huge deviation that I was not looking forward to. The hole on the block was not tapped. And I would assume that depending on your region or something, they want you to tap it with whatever bolt you have. So I ended up having to get the tap and die set out. It's an M8-1, I believe. I don't often use this chart, but I'm really glad that I saved that and it is mounted there for a reason. So I just, I don't have every drill bit that a machinist would have. So I'm kind of always going for a range. And of course my drill set is full and complete, but that bit was just sitting on the drill press. So everything ended up working out. So this was terrifying because I didn't have any space to hand tap it. So I keep seeing all these videos of people using drills and then in the CNC router, I see that you can control that and have things drill itself. But I went down and didn't go deep enough. So I made the very dangerous move of putting the drill bit back on after I had tapped halfway through. And I thought I went a little too deep because uh, I don't know how deep I can go, but I was going to shorten the bolt and I go, no, I'll just go a little deeper. And then I ended up doing both, making the hole deeper and shortening the bolt. Here we're reconnecting the gas lines. That fuel filter came with the engine and I bought a different fuel filter. And I ended up changing that after the fact. Because I think that was maybe some of my problem. And I kept reminding myself the whole day. Add oil, add oil, add oil, add oil. I did not want to ruin this brand new engine by not putting in oil. Here's the moment of truth. So after that happened, I took the night off. So I ended up putting this muffler from this and it had these mounts, the Allen screws, and then these had posts. So I ended up getting, that's an M8 by 1.25 stainless steel nut. So I got those put on. And after calling the dealer, sounds like everything's wired, everything's good. But when I turned the key on, there was nothing. So after a little investigation, sounds like my kids left the key on. So we're gonna jump the lawnmower and see what goes on. Poor Ben, he was beating himself up after that. 
but we've all learned our lesson. Oh, that felt good. It's actually very surprised. You see the uh, the fan there, and <laughs> you got to reuse the muffler and the housing, which I guess if it costs more, fine. I was disappointed that I ended up having to reuse a rusty muffler and that old oxidized plastic didn't look very great on there, but whatever. So this is the heat shield gets put back on, four bolts. go it was really exciting to turn on the blades right there i just felt the full horsepower and just that that really solidified my decision to get a brand new engine so overall we can change an engine in a john deere zero turn mower there you have it we have a lot to mow because we are way way backed up so where we're going we don't need roads like subscribe hit that notification button God bless.